Hello, my name is Hao Lang. I'm going to talk to you today about the Citrix Workspace Environment Manager performance optimization aspect. So I'm going to point out the CPU, the memory, and the uh, IOPS optimizations that we can do just by simple checkboxes. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to open up some Internet Explorer here. And we are going to open up a few tabs like a few like users do. So Microsoft Citrix uh, MSN Google Google all right so we got a few pages open here so now we're going to look at the task manager and see what kind of utilization we're using just from opening those pages so you will notice that we're using up a decent amount of memory just sitting there so we're just going to go ahead and Take a screenshot of that. Just so we can have it to look at later. So we're going to leave that off to the side and we're going to leave that minimized for a while while we're waiting for that to kick in. It takes whatever our configured amount of time is. I do believe our lab environment here is set up to five minutes. So we're, we're going to wait and watch it and see what happens. So while we're doing that, we're going to start looking at the CPU. So as I launch all my applications here, you see it has a decent amount of performance. It's bouncing around. Excel, like so. we can scroll a little bit, see how it goes. Do we know scrolling is a lot of fun? As you can see, it's scrolling pretty decently there. Access, Word, let's open it back up again, show you typing. And as you can see, it's responsive like it should be. I'll put up a big Excel file here. As you can see, it's scrolling. Not so much an issue. It goes through just fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use these CPU eaters that we have. And I'm going to peg the processor. And we're going to see what happens. So right now you see my processor is pegged. It's at 99% just on that one. If we go over to the performance tab here, you see it's just pegged to the top. So now how would you expect a, a, a workstation or a ZenApp server or anything to handle this? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. If we launch Word, I still type just fine. If I launch Access, and if I launch my Excel file, as you can see, things really aren't affected. I can scroll around, I can do whatever I need to do, and we're still a very happy uh, application. We're a happy user. We still have control to do whatever we need to do. Well, how does it work? Actually, it works pretty simply. Well, before we get into how it works, let's see if I can start another one of these things and see what happens. So if I turn another one on, the processor is still pegged at 100%, but now we see that these two are fighting over it. They both have 50%. So now that I've got two that are vying for all my processor, how does the system run? Well, as you can see, it's still running just fine. I open up Access, I open up my Excel spreadsheet here. Just that's Excel. Let's open up my spreadsheet. So there's my spreadsheet and I can still scroll without any issues. So you see everything scrolling like it should. Well how it works is actually very simple. Let me turn these things off. What it does is, before I turn it off and get rid of it, 
it changes the base priority using standard Windows API calls. So as you can see, my CPU eater was set to low. What that means is not that it uh, is taking the processor power away from the application. What it's doing is it's just setting it to a lower priority. So it's still going to take all the processor it possibly needs. Now if another application comes through, it's going to dial this one back. So that way the other application can just kind of fly by and then give it back to this. So you have that user with that SQL query that takes an hour and a half to run in uh, Excel on a terminal server. Instead of it taking an hour and a half, it might take an hour 40, an hour 45 minutes. It adds a little bit of time, but not much. It does the exact same thing as far as IOPS is concerned. Is it will go through and start uh, uh, changing the base priority. So let me show you the configuration of that before we go any further. So in our Workspace Environment Manager console, we go to the System Optimization tab. CPU management. Now to turn this on is actually pretty simple. We go to check the enable CPU spike protection and then enable intelligent CPU and IO optimization. So this turns on the CPU and the IO aspect of it. Now as far as the percentages goes, as you can see here I am running two CPUs. So on the server here, let me go back to this, so on the console here, what we're doing is we want to set this so it's below the threshold of a single CPU on a single processor. So what that means is if I have one CPU, that's 100%. We'd want to set it at a minimum or a maximum of 99%. I, if you had one CPU, I'd probably set it down to 25 anyways. Uh, if you have two CPUs, that's each CPU is worth 50%. You'd want to set it at the maximum of 49%. And if you have four CPUs, you want to set it at the maximum of 24%, and so on and so forth. Each CPU would be one quarter, or one half, or however many, break it up that way. So that is how you turn it on. Once you've got that turned on, it's automatically working. There's nothing else to configure. Now, if you want to come through and set something like Affinity, where it only goes to one processor, or you want to do some kind of clamping, where it limits a specific uh, process, to a, uh, to a percentage and can never go higher than that. By doing that, you are impeding the application from working correctly. If the application needs 100% of the CPU and you're only giving it 10%, it's going to take 10 times longer. It's just, that's the way it's going to work. Uh, if we go to the memory management aspect here, this is how we turn on the memory management. So we enable the working set optimization and then set a time. I have it set down to five minutes for uh, uh, speed so we can come back and look at it pretty quickly. And in production I usually set it to 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, that That's all it is for the memory. It's not that it does the rebasing of the DLLs that Citrix has done over the years. It is actually quiescing all the applications on the box. Every application when it runs it says hey I need X amount of RAM. So if I'm Internet Explorer just taking an example, I launch it, it says I need 100 megs of RAM. It's going to reserve a 100 megs of RAM for Internet Explorer. The application might only use 15 megs of it. So what this does is it takes that other 85 megs away from Internet Explorer and gives it back to the system. Now if Internet Explorer does something and needs more RAM, it's just going to take it back from the system. So it's not hurting it. It's just making sure it's being efficient in how much RAM it's actually using. And if we go to I.O., what we need, what we should have set in here is some basic settings. Always have something like trusted installer set down to a low so that way we will never impact us when we start installing. And we also want to do a uh, Microsoft Security, Microsoft Security Essentials, M-S-S-E-C-E-S. <clears throat> and if you have any kind of antivirus or anything, you want to set these all in here, an SCCM, an Alteris, something you know that's going to take a lot of IOPS. You want to set its priority lower. So again, an antivirus scan. If you're running it, instead of taking three hours to do a full system scan, it might take three hours and ten minutes. Just because other things that need the IOPS are going to dial it back. So that way it can pass through and just keep going. hope that makes sense. So now let's go back and look over here at our memory optimization. 
we look here at our numbers, bring this closer so we can compare. Internet Explorer, the first one, the 64 bit, was at 11 or 12 megs, now it's at 3. 37 is now at 18. 53 is now at 18. 48 is now down to 2. And 61 is now down to 31. So you see our memory is dropping. If we go down the list here too, of everything, you see all of these Windows processes doesn't only affect user processes, it also affects every process that is in your session. You notice what our processes here are, are showing. They are completely and totally been stripped of what the RAM is that they would usually need. So we are looking at a very minimal footprint of RAM. If we show all processes, can't in my lab, I forgot I'm logged in as a user, sorry. But you can see that it is using very little. So now if we come back to IE, just to show what it's going to do, when we start asking for more RAM, I'm going to move this over here. Let's do a Google search. So I bring up Google. Sorry, I want to try and make sure that we have our window so we can see both. You see the RAM has come back up, but not to the original numbers. And if I do a Google search of, I don't know, uh, NFL scores. So here's a quick search on NFL scores. If we look at, compare it to our original here, we're still not up to where we were, except for the one. And in five minutes, it will take that back again from the system. So I'm working in it. It'll keep taking that memory away. So that way it's always there, always available for the system. I hope that uh, helps you with the performance aspect of the Workspace Environment Manager. Um, I will continue to give videos regarding uh, how to set things up through policies and everything else. So have a good day.